Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to a new video here on the channel. In today's video we're taking a look at how we can use schema markups in order to give Google more information about our business so Google can better understand where we should be ranking and for what keywords we should be showing up. With that being said this tutorial will cover Wix specifically but the way that you use schema markups will be the same for any other platform as well because the schema markup code can be used for any type of platform, no matter what CMS you're currently using. So with that being said, let's just jump into today's tutorial and hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is just head over to Wix or if you're using any other CMS like WordPress, just head over to WordPress. The process will be fairly similar so you can still follow along. Now, the importance with schema markups, as I just mentioned, is to give Google as much information as possible about our business, no matter what you're doing. And schema markups can be used in many different ways and we'll go through this as well, because there's many types of information that we can give to Google depending on what our website is about, what we're selling, what we're doing. Uh, so there's many ways to use schema markups. But today, in today's video, we'll, we'll go through the local business schema markup, which is, I would say, the most common one to use and especially if you're watching this video you're most likely a local business like a photographer or an electrician or whatever it is so that being said uh, the first thing you want to do is head over to your wix platform and then once we are on wix on each individual page there's something called the advanced seo settings so if we go here to our pages and then we just go to the page that we're currently on and something to mention here schema markup works on a page to page basis. So even though we implement schema markup on this page, it's not gonna implement on the other pages. So you wanna make sure that you implement it on all your pages that is relevant, depending on what schema markup you're implementing. Uh, but we're gonna go to SEO basics here, and then we'll just go to the advanced tab. Once we're in the advanced tab, we have something here called the structured data markup. Now, once we are in this section, we can see that we currently have already a schema markup on our website that came with this design that we have and this is from a past video that i made which is a blog and we have a search feature up here so we have the site links search box schema markup which gives google information about the search box now if you want to add another one what we'll do is just go here to add a new markup and then what go or what wix has actually done is that uh, in one of my videos, I was talking about a tool a couple of years ago, and they, they actually started linking to the tool right here, which is, I should be getting paid from Wix because they're stealing my ideas. But in one of my old videos, I showed you this tool. So if you click this link, this is probably one of the most user-friendly ways to create schema markup without having to do any form of coding yourself. It's a very user-friendly way, but Wix, again, you should be paying me for the information that I gave you, but anyway. Uh, so what we do here, this is a tool that will give us a schema markup and all we have to do is fill out the information. So first off, we can select what type of schema are we creating. And as you can see, there's a bunch of difference. We have article, which is going to be for blog posts and news articles. And this is a way for Google to get more information about your blog post or your news article so they can better implement it and use that information in Google. Sometimes when you do a Google search, for example, you see that uh, articles and blog posts are highlighted or, or showcased in a different way than in normal pages. And that is most likely due to them having the schema markup, which allows Google to get more information uh, about that specific article itself. Uh, but today we're not going into that one. Uh, we're going to do a local business, but I'm just going to briefly. So we have breadcrumbs here. Breadcrumbs is another way you can uh, give Google more information. Events, FAQ page, how to tutorials, job posting, organizations, person, product, recipe. So if you have a recipe on your website, uh, video, and then you have a website. Um, and product here, you can do like ratings. Sometimes you can see that uh, product pages have ratings or stars that are showing up in the Google search. And that's because they're using the aggregated rating or review um, schema markup. But in this case, we're going to do a local business. And if you're a organization, you can do the organization one. If, and if you are, if you have a personal website, you can use the person one basically what you're going to do through these three here are basically the same thing. There's going to be some variations, but most of the information will be fairly similar. 
we're going to do a local business. So we're going to click local business right here. And now we're going to start by selecting our type of local business. So you can be an animal shelter, childcare, dentist, dry cleaning or laundry. There's a bunch of different options in here. I am going to do for a photography service. So we're going to do professional services here. Uh, professional service right there. Perfect. And then what we want to fill out is first the name of our business. And here you can see my old addresses over here for some reason. So if you want to look at my old address, you're welcome to do so. Uh, but we're just going to type in a example name here. Um, or we're actually going to use. So I brought up this example photography in New York. I have nothing. I'm not affiliated with this company or this person. Uh, so shout out to you, James Maher Photography. Uh, we're going to use you as an example for this video. So we're going to put the name of our company. It's going to be James Maher um, Photography. And then secondly, we have an image URL. So the image URL is just going to be something that people would relate to your business. So it could be like a picture of your photography in general, if you're a photographer or just something about like something that represents your company. In this case, I'm just going to take this picture here. Uh, so it's just an example. But in your case, it could be like if you're an electrician, it could be like some of your employees standing next to one of your company cars, or it could be, I don't know, some something that is related to your company. That's the most important part. Uh, but I'm going to go for this one. So I'm just going to copy the image URL, uh, which is right here in Swedish. I'll go back to the image URL and just paste it in here. Then we have ID, uh, ID URL. So this will be if we have different departments. So this one is not super relevant. And we have cops going by in the background. I do not live in the hood, even though it might sound like it. Um, so we have ID URL right here. And it's not. it doesn't really matter. Unless you have different departments within your company, this is going to be irrelevant. So we're just going to put the URL to uh, the company's website right here. Then we have the company's website again. So we're just going to paste in that URL here. Secondly, we have the phone number. So we're just going to go to James phone number over here. Please do not harass James uh, because he's included here. Uh, so yeah, just type in your uh, phone number right here. And then we're going to do price range. And for the price range, you can basically put you're an estimate between your prices. So let's say our photography starts at $100. We can do 100 to 250, whatever it is. Or we can do it by a $4 scale, which you normally see in your Google listings. Uh, I can find it right now. But what you can do is basically put an estimate of your pricing. And then we have the street, which is just going to be the street address. So I'm just going to copy that over here from his Google listing. And I think that will be six wood. Uh, which one is the address? I'm going to assume. Does he have in easier information to read? Let's see here. Um, no. Right. That's why I added this one. So <laughs> I have a, another URL right here with a random address in the US. Uh, so I'm just going to add something random here. So we have a street address over here. I'm going to put that in here and then we have a city. So we're going to do this one, Greensboro. And shout out to you if you actually live in this, in this address. Uh, and then we have a zip code. So we're just going to copy that real quick and we'll put that in there. And finally, we have countries. We're just going to do the US and then we have the state which is in North Carolina. Now, this is not related to James photography here because uh, I just want to show you as an example. This is obviously not going to be a valid schema markup because I'm talking about this company here, but I'm showing a different address. It wouldn't make any sense. You want to make sure all of this is the same across the board. So the information that you're showing on your website, the address that you're showing on the website should be the same information that you're putting in the schema markup. And you should have the same information in your Google uh, My Business listing. That's the basics of it. So you want to make sure it's all connected, basically. Finally, we have the latitude and the longitude, but we can actually click on uh, geo coordinates directly, and that will just give us the geo coordinates. And then we have the opening hours, so you can either add your individual opening hours, uh, but in this case, I believe that James has 24/7. James works around the clock, and he is in the city that never sleeps, so it makes sense. 
Um, and then we have our social pri uh, profiles and uh, here you can just add uh, as many as you want basically but I believe that James only has an Instagram right here so we're just going to copy the link to his Instagram select Instagram over here and paste in that URL and there you go now if you have more departments within your company you can add more departments but in our case we don't so our schema markup is going to be done and we have just created it here on the side so what we can do now is go here to the little copy button so we'll just click on there that's going to copy our schema markup we'll go back to our wix editor and then right here at the top we're just going to paste that in and then finally here at the name we're just going to call this our professional service and now I did my caps lock, but that's totally fine. Whatever you put here doesn't matter, it's just for you to know whatever schema markup you put in. Once that is done, we're just gonna click apply and then that schema markup is gonna be working. And that is basically how you make the implementation. Now you have to remember that you have to make each schema for each individual page. So that means you have to go to the next one. So in this on this page, for example, we have post here as well so we're going to go to the edit settings we're going to go to seo basics or actually for post you can't do it in wix but if you go to site menu we have some additional pages like the about us page i'll go here i'll go to seo basics i'll go to the advanced tab structure data markup and then i'll add a new markup right here or you can just post in the same one if we, you want to implement your local services one as you should have it basically across all your pages anyway and you can add multiple schema markup schema markups as well so if this was a blog post for example you would obviously have both the local business one and you would have the uh, blog post schema markup as well that's the basics of working with schema markups obviously you can go more advanced than this but in the essence of it is it's a fairly easy way to implement especially when it comes to wix now, if you do want help with your seo for your local business you can always reach out to me as i run an agency called new gen media uh, i'll leave the contact information in the description of today's video if you want to book a call and we can chit chat one-on-one -on, -one on your seo